We can't die here with no stories. Leave a legacy, don't you worry. We're the ones who wear the crown. We're fighters breaking out together. We're the ones that built this city So we're the ones that break it down Warriors with fearless spirit One step and there's no way down We're gonna burn this place down Burn it down to the ground If you're ready, make a sound so the world can hear you Good um, evening, everyone, um, and welcome to an exciting... We're back to casting again. Um, tonight, we have a, an interesting matchup in the LES Emerald League between Mint Gaming Avalon and TPO Raiders. My name is Mr. Honk, and tonight I'm joined by Loki Bear. How are you doing tonight, Loki? I'm very good. Very excited to be back here. Um... Trying to get the lobby set up right now. But, uh, yeah, definitely exciting for the spectator issue to be resolved so we can get back to our casting stuff. So, um, I have, I'm gonna be honest with you, Jim, I have no idea how to make this lobby. Okay, I will get on that. Um, but yeah, I'm just looking over the OP.GG. It looks like we're in for an exciting matchup tonight. So it's TPO Raiders versus Mint Gaming Avalon. Oh. Okay, uh, Lucy just invited me back. Alright. So just bear with us while we get into, uh, this lobby. Uh, we do have a sub tonight. Uh, Mopish Seeker was nice enough to sub in for um, seven today, so. As he had a last minute issue come up. Yeah, but it'll be exciting to see these guys play tonight. Um, it's been a minute since we casted, and I've been able to oh FC watch. <laughs> yeah. Because, uh,. Most places have all been having issues or they're running off of those raffle files, which have been loads of fun. Yeah, yeah, no, they've, they've been a ton of fun. Uh, I personally have not done it because I do not like playing off the raffle files, but... Well, my computer guess... also can't handle it. Oh, yeah, a lot of people's computers couldn't, so... All right, so looks like there's just a little bit of an issue with someone getting in the lobby. I guess that there are lobby issues, so. There we go, it looks like we, oh, Jim, are you in here or no? Uh, they're inviting me back now. Okay. Everybody is in lobby, waiting for spectator. Um, can you just repost the spec links? Yep. Or the draft link, that one. Oh. So Smolder is enabled this week, and also so Nico has been disabled due to a bug with her clone, so. 
don't know how much it's gonna throw people off, but I'll be interested if the dragon gets through. Everything good? Yep. Alright. Alright, well I hope these guys did their scouting because uh, I did not do it for them. <laughs> they were doing it. Of course they were. When I got Alright. Senna is the first ban for mint. Intriguing. No, that's just... I feel like Senna's getting a lot of popularity lately, so. She's still fairly strong, even with getting um, some of the nerfs to Fasting Senna, Farming Senna is still strong. So a lot of people are trying to keep that away. Uh, Trundle, another big pick. Belveth, Malkai. Um, those are all pretty strong champs in their role. And stuff that you kind of want to avoid because Belveth is obnoxious. If she gets ahead and gets the ball rolling and starts that scaling, she's going to have that infinite attack speed. Uh, Pike well, apparently is more there's something. Pick. Apparently there's something with Belveth, and if she gets the Void Grubs, it kind of like uh, I guess speeds up her stacks. Apparently, uh, is what I was told today. Void related speeds up the stacking. And there is the Smolder Hover. It's going to be locked in on the side of Mint. It's not a surprise. I'm sure it's going to be fought over uh, between the two teams. So let's see what TPO responds with. Because my assumption is going to be is that Smolder is going to go in the bot lane. Gale to 225. This will probably be the last week that he's played. So everybody can go cry for a little bit after that. Um, because apparently after, uh, my discussion with Clown Gaming today, they, he is getting gutted. So, Varus was locked in in response to the Smolder on the side of TPO. You see the Zac being hovered, which has been shown to be a dominating force in both the top lane and jungle still, surprisingly. And mid lane, technically. Seen it really? a few times. Yeah. Solo lane Zac is just obnoxious because he does so much damage and he can trade and just pick up those blobs and heal back up to full health because of the passive with the new mini runes that they have. Um, you need to fix your mic. There's way too much feedback. All right. It looks like Udir is being hovered on the side of Mint and will be locked in. And let's see what is the last pick for Mint. It looks like it's going to be a Nautilus, potentially. Alright, so it's a Smolder Nautilus bot lane and a new deer somewhere in the mix. I know he's been being played top lane in mid or jungle in mid I don't know where he goes honestly I think we lost Jim uh, I'm trying to see what I can do oh. regarding my mic. it's better now all right we have fresh locked in on the side of TPO um no you're them be back not coming back as much okay I think you're good so we have seven. the the first uh, three have been picked for both teams. We're gonna go into round the last round of bans, but Briar has been banned. Nobody wants to see the crackhead flying across the map. Um, I feel like Briar's one of those champs that it is quite difficult to kind of figure out um, how to play around her. She does have that little bit of ounce of chaos in her with the inability to control herself in the alt in that W mm -hmm. um, without 
blowing some other uh, abilities or trying to prevent yourself to stop. Um, but she is something that can kind of snowball quick and be impactful with her ult if it lands. They did ban the Alawi on the side of Mint. And TPO rounds off their bans with a J4, which is, I guess, always like a solid ban. He's got a lot of uh, lockdown, so. These Bobas are the most interesting thing. I got Boba tea today. I made my day. And Rumble is the last ban for Mint. So it looks like Mint thinks that it's going to be Zack Jungle and not Zack Top Lane. Because um, those are two, two big Top Lane bands out there. Um, part of me wonders if this is going to be an Udyr Top. Because we have been seeing him quite a bit up in that Top Lane. And it is going to be an Aatrox locked in. So that does show the Zack going in that jungle. Aatrox jungle is a thing, man. Um, it's not common. Aztec played. has played it. Yeah. Well, Abdos. I have to start using his current... I'm not using him. Alright, Sejuani is being hovered here on the side of Mint. Um, that kind of gives away where I believe where Udi is going. Because, I mean, I don't think I've seen Sejuani really played elsewhere aside from jungle. I know a while back she was viable in the top lane. I don't know if that's still the case, but. All right, last pick from Mint here. It's gotta be their mid laner, unless it's gonna be some weird. Um, Nautilus mid? <laughs> not Nautilus, I would say Smolder mid more than Nautilus. Uh, they're gonna lock in Yone. The second win brother. Will we get a response of the first wind brother? No. Hey, hey. I just Actually, noticed. What? Oh, he's looking at Silas. They did not ban uh, Rio Goods Akali, but he chose to choose the Silas into this team. Um, does have a decent amount of ults that he can take. The Sejuani ult, the young hey, ult, oh, Nautilus ult. He can take Smolder's ult. Smolder's ult. I wonder how that animation looks. I know, right? And like, I mean, it's based off of Smolder stacks, right? Uh, I don't know how it works. Cause if that's he gets kind the... of crazy. Cause that's Smolder's passive, not his alt. So I don't think he's gonna get the gotcha. alt the same way. Right. But predictions are going out, um, so go ahead and get those in for who will win game one. Hey, yo, it's my one year anniversary of TPO. Nice. <laughs> Alright. How are you feeling about these drafts, Jim? Um, they're very interesting. There's a whole lot of frontline um, for Mint Gaming Avalon between the Udyr the Nautilus, the Sejuani. And like Sejuani and Udyr can go both top and jungle. I'm expecting the Udyr top um, with the Sejuani jungle. And it's kind of like a protect the carry with the um, Yone there to kind of dive in onto the back line. Uh, the one thing that I did notice, unless it's going to be like a hybrid tank AP Udyr, they're going to be lacking AP damage, unless Udyr is the one to go. Um, <clears throat> while the Raid TPO Raiders comp does have a bit more, they have a bit of a dive comp um, with the Zac, the Aatrox wanting to go in, the Silas wanting to go in, so they might be able to get in onto that Smolder and blow him up before he can output the damage in the, those fight fights, while the Varus kind of also adds to poke, potentially depending on the build path that Florigato chooses to go this game. Um, I guess uh, Florigato normally is very current in the meta and understands it quite well, so I don't really know what is in 
I, I want to say that the lethal tempo. You um, can either go on hit lethal tempo or you can go uh, lethality poke sort of thing. Okay. It's either or. It's ultimately up to a lot of people's preferences yeah. on what they play, which is why he tends to get mixed uh, win percentages because they're looking at like, oh, he's getting played 60% this, 40% that. Now, um, it is going to be an Aatrox versus Udyr top lane, back in the jungle. I think the rest was kind of, uh, pretty straightforward, but I know that those, uh, chants can, can be flexed. I have no idea what the matchup looks like for Udyr versus Aatrox, but, um, as long as it's not me on Aatrox, I think that they're fine. We all saw how that went last night. Listen, it was fine. It was balanced as all <laughs> things should be. Um, I will see if it's interesting how the spot lane plays out, how aggressive TPO Raiders can get into this smolder and punish it in the early game, um, just because you do not want to let him farm, let him scale up to get that those stacks in to the point where he's got the, the elder dragon buff constantly and just yeah. blowing up your team that's probably one of the biggest thing that is annoying um it will be interesting to see where the jungler's path if they're both just going to do the usual pathing starting where their bot lane is and then going towards top or if there's going to be a change up where one of them starts top side and goes towards their bot lane I hope to see some like level one shenanigan type things. Those are like probably my favorite. Um, but we are going to cut to a quick spectator delay to get ready for game number one. So don't go anywhere, and we will be right back. Yeah. 
Do you remember telling me that I couldn't be anything? But now I'm like a god, getting everything that I want. Yeah, you think you win, but you lose. You don't got no means to do anything that you. Alright, everyone, welcome back to game number one of PPO Raiders vs. Mint Gaming Avalon. We do have Mint on the blue side, where uh, Raiders are on red. It does look like Raiders is looking for a some type of uh, cheese strat invade. We'll have to see if they get it. Uh, as... Mint starts there <laughs> straight her five point. These are like my favorite. Uh, little yeah, Tommy's not paying attention, so he is standing in the other bush. I think it's more along the lines of they might be expecting an invade just based off of yeah. where everybody's standing. They have four men, four guys in one bush, and then little Tommy to make sure that they aren't invading the other way. Yeah, no, I was just making a kind of joke, too. No, it would have been really good if they, uh, went in and hooked that smolder. Oh, they did place Vision down, so they do see little Tommy walking over Vision yeah. in the top side. So it's pretty clear that Zack is starting on the bot side of the map. Uh, Vision was placed on the red buff. Oh, they gave more of a leash than I give you. Some early trading in the mid lane. A little bit of poke. Smolder did start the. went fleet footwork but started the Achu. I forget the names of these abilities on Smolder. Alright, um, and engage Oh, this on is not good for Pendragon. Yeah, Pendragon getting a little too uh, confident, I guess, <laughs> into the oh good. I think it was the overstep there. He ended up tank stepping into turret just long enough to get a turret shot onto him. So any positive trade became negative trade. The flash blown out. Flash follow oh and first blood over to the Silas. Using that early level three, at first a level three advantage to just go in quick. I love watching we good play. <laughs> All right, it looks like uh, an engage here in river. Silas engages onto the Sejuani. Sejuani is taken out by Zach. Uh, Zach's in a little bit of a tough spot. Looks like Aatrox is roaming down here, but. I think it's just kind of to relieve some pressure off. Now the bot lane is a little bit of a different story. Um, Florgato is kind of feeling the uh, the pressure of the leaning against the smolder. So the CS is a little bit down, not too much that they can't catch up on, but... I do think that this is going to be a cloud of Varus, I believe, just because of the... Um... The Halo Blades. Halo Blades, yes. Relatively, uh, 
kind of quiet bot lane. Yeah. Nothing compared to the mid <laughs> lane. Listen, mom and dad just got in a fight up in top river. Um, mom doesn't have come until level 6? No, the junglers haven't decided to come down bot yet. Oh god. Right, we good looking for another engage onto the mid laner. It, Yoni is getting very low, and direct camera goes top lane. Will Tommy does have a level advantage on this. Oh, we wizard right now. Uh, that is a big wave that's coming in though, so I think it's just that he's further along in clearing of these waves. He did get a bit more of a wave when the Udir roamed down to try helping in that river fight. So it didn't. So Silas did not get the kill onto the Yon for the second time. But it is opting to back. Well, it looks like uh, Gaming Avalon's gonna be looking to try to sneak these Void Grubs. Um, are spotted onto on that scuttle, and the Nautilus did approach as well. So they're now just gonna look to trade Void Grubs for first Drake isn't terrible you don't have to necessarily get the void grubs um, you just have to make sure that they don't get five or six essentially yeah. um, i've seen teams kind of sit there and still at like before their first back when they sp if they're still out and they spawn they'll try to sneak one uh, and then back sejuani did head into the top side jungle of tpo see a roam by Morphish Seeker as well as Little Tommy coming in. These guys are going to be in trouble here as this is a 4v3 up top side. It looks like Yon is going to be the first to fall. A flash by Nautilus to try getting out. It does pull the Zac under turret but he doesn't even go down to the passive. Good roams by that support and top lane of TPO Raiders to capitalize and get two after they over tried to bait in the Silas to try getting a kill on them. Right, it is currently 4 to 1. There is a... I don't know, gold lead. 400? I don't know. Gemini That's more than 400. Okay, um, alright. 1400? Yeah, that one. 1300? Same thing. Alright, Aatrox did blow the ult in that last little skirmish there. I think Udyrs is kind of, I don't know where it is. Udyrs doesn't, doesn't really have an ult. Gotcha, okay. He has forms that are on cooldown. His R is the Phoenix form, which is when he has that AoE, like, snowstorm around him. Gotcha. He's just got different stances that he goes through. Yeah, I never really understood Udyr. To be honest. It looks like Sejuani is looking to collapse up here top lane on the Aatrox. Is he gonna stop the back? No, just let me go through. Uh, Yon is also rotating up. Hey, little Tommy on that Aatrox needs to be careful here. I think he saw the Yon through that bush on that ward. Good dodge way to get away from the Sejuani. This is allowing Zach to actually just take the bot side of the Sejuani and look to get behind the Smolder and Nautilus here. The Nautilus has already caught out. Uh, and now, good hook by Mofish Seeker. Oh, let's the go. The call for Mommy comes out, but it looks like it's still going to be a kill onto the Nautilus, and potentially it plates a plate or so afterwards as the... Uh, uh. Smolder Are we really going to fight under turret and top <laughs> Udyr starts proxy farming. Alright. I think Pendragon is a bit low here to be engaging onto this full health Silas. It looks like the teams have committed to vertical jungling for an extended period of time. Zach hasn't come back towards topside um, of late. There's 
I want to say, I want to say that's 40 seconds, but the timer looks a bit buggy on my end. I don't even have a timer for Void Grub. It's a spectator thing. But I know that they are coming up, because I can see them. Okay. No, what's happening is it's showing both Void Grubs and... Oh, oh this is a big catch -out. Alt. Good says Lonnie Alt to lock down the Silas there and get that shut down going for them now this is going to force such wanting to back void grubs is up in 15 seconds so if zach makes his way up there they could potentially secure them silas does have the tp available as does yon they both opt to use it to get back to lane quicker to fight up top lane leaves little tommy at very low health i don't know when the health regen teleport starts either so this is something that they got to be careful because they are going to be looking to potentially opt in to a 4v2 the hook onto the sejuani the sejuani ult was stolen by the silas now the nautilus is pulled back in a sejuani ult used by the silas going in onto the jungler nobody's dead yet smite from the zvek does get the nautilus it looks like the 4v3 was just not enough as even the uh, Aatrox gets involved now. Oh no. The Zack may Zach. go down here, but it looks like the Silas was trying to use the Zack's passive to potentially dive down again, but that ended up being a two for one in the long run, as the Aatrox was able to catch the Sejuani trying to flee, and nobody took of... Void Grubs at all. Yeah, I was kind of hoping that like they would just turn and take Void Grubs, but Sejuani is headed towards that dragon um tpo should be heading towards the void grubs and not fighting for the mountain drake but they have a ton of vision in the top side jungle right now the zek does get spotted by the nautilus and such warning he's gonna go he in only... oh, locks God. the two together Resh is here, hooked onto the Sejuani, followed up by the Verisol. This could be detrimental for Mint Gaming Avalon. Oh, big alt combo from the Yone and the oh my goodness. Smolder, but only one falls. The Smolder's uh. trying to chase to see what they can get. Has not been able to get a second kill. That ended up being a, another three for one in the long run. Yeah. This is this is absolutely <laughs> wild of a game. Um, I do love the the roaming, the how Such these teams are playing together. Been spotted headed towards there. I think they, they know are there's aware. Shit there. Um, but it looks like TPO, based off of these pings, is just gonna elect to give up all six void grubs. I don't know if that's really the right call, but you know, at, they have. Maybe more prio in the bot side of the map. Uh, or is Thresh and Aatrox gonna go and try and, uh, wh what are you doing there, buddy? Aatrox is caught out by the ult and a shutdown onto that Udir, who is looking like he is building AP. When Merc Treads now has, um, <coughs> the health steal item, the heal cut item for AP. Yeah, the Oblivion Orb. That's what it's called. I couldn't remember off the top of my head. Zach and Thresh come in, but nothing comes out of the play. Um, that pink war has been in that bush for far too long. <laughs> Pink's got a pink. Yeah, okay, Jim. Alright, so you were right. Ferris did off for the lethality. We do have the Yumu's Ghost Blade as well as Boots of Swiftness built. Where uh, Smolder went the Essence Reaver um, with the CDR boots. I think that's your typical build on Smolder right now. Uh, Mopish is a oh, little. Does uh, the ult from. Sejuani just melts him though. Uh, by the way, so let's see. Smolder is Another at 87 mid, But the Yone blows a defensive ult to get out. 
Bavaris needs to be careful here. Szechuan doesn't have ult, but there's enough tankiness where they could potentially dive this turret here. They're looking for us. Szechuan is coming around back. The early cleanse is not enough, but the shutdown oh, goes on to the Nautil Nautilus. Not necessarily the person that you want to get, but Silas is now here. It looks like they might be going for the Sejuani here instead of the two carries. Sejuani does get the objective. The Silas now engages. There goes the Sejuani. The alt stolen alt from the... Nautilus does get the smolder, and the smolder does go down as well to the Silas. Joan oh. teleports in, trying to get onto that Thresh. Is Silas Thresh is going to go down, but Silas is going to du just duel out with them in the back as he gets another kill, currently 5, 2, and 7, and Zack is mid lane, just trading the turrets for that Herald in a mid-tier 1 and a charge on tier 2. Zach launch does not oh. go through. It looks like Zach's just going to have to go down here. The ult is yeah. blown. I think he's just trying to take as much as he can as this smite comes out from somebody to secure the Sejuani. large raptor. Sejuani uh, did use smite somewhere. just not sh quite sure where. It probably was on the large raptor. I think... <laughs> I think Abdos was just like, you know what, since I'm not going to survive, I'm just going to press R and take your, your raptors. Nautilus is potentially caught out here. Flash forward from the Aatrox to so make sure the kill goes down. Oh. Oh, that was just short. That stolen Sejuani uh. ult could have potentially made it so that another kill went over. I don't know, they, they have enough pressure to kind of push this mid turret, but they got a lot uh, the on the to side. We goods there though. I don't, uh, I don't doubt that. But uh, they are getting engaged right onto little Tommy here, and it looks like he is going to go down to Smolder. Not the one we want the kills on here. They're starting to scatter. Good dodge by the Silas there to get out of range of. The Nautilus hook. Smolder is at 116 stacks currently. He's about 115 away from being a big dragon. A real one. It's a baby elder dragon. Baby elder dragon, yes, of course. I wonder if that's what TPO Raiders was looking at. They said, you know what, they have a baby elder dragon that's scaling so we need to get to elder dragon as fast as possible <laughs> so we can yeah. have five instead of one because we do have drake up in 40 seconds now and it is hextech which would be good um, for both these teams a bit better yeah. for the yon and the uh, smolder but the varus wouldn't absolutely hate it um it does look like uh, both junglers are very close to finishing that jungle item. I don't think either side's going to end up having the 12 the smite advantage for this Drake, though. No, they're not. But uh, there is going to be a fight here for this, this is Drake. It's currently I don't... a 4v5. The sm oh tele Aatrox does have teleport, but. Is teleporting to mid lane, not into the fight. The Zach goes in onto that uh, smolder. Silas is getting chased off though. Udir is just blocking off the rest of the team. Oh Silas goodness. gets shut down by that smolder. The Aatrox is here though. Szechuan is low, has to be careful. Stunned. The Aatrox oh, gets no. stunned. Zach goes back in onto the back line. The Aatrox takes out the Smolder. It's just the Yone left for the damage. It's now a 4v2 as the Yone goes down and a double kill over to the Varus as he takes down the Nautilus. They're so gonna take this there, but dragon. low health. She needs to be careful. She's not in vision right now. Jumps over oh way goodness. too early. She's gonna end up going down and that's gonna be a triple kill and an ace over to that Varus. Nicely done. That is a 6 1 and 3 Varus with a 350 gold bounce. <laughs> <laughs> Just 
Stop. Listen, Aztec is, is not... <laughs> Listen, Blowing. I do it all the freaking time. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just roasting him because he would do the same thing to me. He would. He, he would be on your case right now. But uh, the smite is completed by TPO. Little Tommy face checks a full health of deer. Is he able to uh, I don't think Udyr likes out? this anymore. I don't think your deer no. likes this anymore. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh, just very little health left he escaped with. Baron is about to spawn here in about 20 seconds. This is going to be a 19 minute Baron. Um, 20 minute Baron, whatever. Just notice little Tommy's build. He is trying to side lane. Um, I think he's gonna either oh, go no. Kenic Lucrin, but he's gonna end up, I think, go down here. Um, does get shut down after the teleport from the Udyr did come out. But it's gonna be a trade up in topside <laughs> for that Yone again. Currently not having a fun game. 3 6 and 2. Got yeah. bullied in the laning phase and just hasn't been able to get there as of yet. Um, it looks like they're trying to kind of set up around bear and clear out that vision that's up there. I gotta um, say, you know, TPO's doing a great job of setting up vision, making sure that, you know, they have adequate uh, vision of where, you know, Mint is at all times. Uh, Wee Wizard is kind of side laning, pushing for this tier 2 turret in top, but I don't think he wants to fight a, an Aatrox that just picked up Spirit Visage. Uh, it is something to keep in mind that there is going to be a teleport advantage in not too long, but we do have another fight. As I says, Ronnie gets caught out here. Um, she's going to get dragged. This could potentially mean the Baron, but it does not look like they're going for it. They're just going to take the topside jungle instead. They do know where the Zack is now after getting hit with the Smolder, a Chew. Uh, and here they They're go, they are looking for the Baron. the Baron. They do have 15 seconds before the Sejuani's up, so they do have to burn it. She does get the help of those Hextech portals. The deer won't be able to teleport while the Aatrox will. So this I don't is something think that they need Aatrox. No, and it's going to go uncontested. Uh, as. <laughs> As TPO Raiders claims the first Baron of the game. Right, we have Hextech Drake up in about two minutes here. If TPO is able to secure this dragon, that does put them at soul. Um, currently, Smolder is sitting at about 165 stacks, so he's not quite to that 225 uh, mark. We will have to see. So oh. going in for another fight. The smite comes down. It is the Sejuani that gets the scuttle. But this is an all-out brawl. As the Zack continues going in, the Silas is now here. Noddle's the first one down. I think it's going to be quickly followed by the Sejuani there. Stolen an alt going left and right. As the Silas goes down to the... Uh, Going, but the Thresh follows up with the Q to go all the way back to the recall and locks it down for little Tommy on that Aatrox to get another kill. Another fight, one heavy handed here by TPO Raiders as the Zack is continuing to just chase the Udir up this top side, saying, Hey, we got a little bit more time before this Drake. I want to see what we can get here. I don't think that they, because Sejuani's down, they don't necessarily need um, uh, it's to have not. Aztec with them, but... Uh, There's still 30 seconds on that trick. They just yeah. fought a minute ahead of time. They were like, this scuttle, this is where we live or die. <laughs> I, it is 13 to 26, almost a, what, 10k gold lead? Yeah, um, 7, about 7. That's almost 10. Okay. Oh, Sejuani all onto the Varus here. Varus. Big shutdown. Oh, but the Silas steals the Sejuani all and just completely one-shots the 
Holy. Smolder. Nautilus is quick to follow as a double kill over to that Silas and essentially <laughs> just sealing the fate of Soul here. I mean, uh, Udir is still up and it looks like they are looking to just take the Drake and ignore the Udir because what is he going to do? 1v3? I don't think he's in any position to do that right now. I think he's just got to back off. They've been doing well in this side lane pressure, but these team fights, they're just not as coordinated, it seems, in the long run. Or they make a play, like they had a big play to get the shutdown onto that Varus, but then end up giving it up um, immediately after, trading one for three again. Alright, Smolder is looking to go down a bot side with... 185 stacks, so we do have Elder spawning in five minutes, so he's got some time to get those stacks up. Baron's up in about two and a half minutes. Udir coming in for round two. This is a very back and forth game. High intensity game. <laughs> yeah. One, so one team alone has more kills than there are minutes in this game. Yep. I want to say we're sitting almost double. Yeah, because you've got uh, 14 between the bot and top lane. And then 11 kills on the Silas, which I hope Silas does not expect to get this uh, champion again next game. <laughs> um, I don't think the Yon likes it this game. Uh, very early defensive Yone alt to get uh, out of the potential fight with that Silas. The wave wasn't there to help the Silas, so it was going to be a fight in the blue side minion wave. But I think he's just not confident right now. A hook caught to catch out this Nautilus. He's just going to get flayed and stuck. Chain CC'd. Holy. We're gonna look for oh. the Yone here who just gotten bullied this entire game. He did get a huge chunk of damage onto this um, Silas, but didn't get anything in return. They're looking to push this mid tier one. They're gonna be responded by the Sejuani, which I don't really think can do much at this point. Um, sure it's a can. one eight and eight Sejuani. Oh, I didn't even catch it. This is a very interesting build path for the Sejuani. Chose to go heart steel. Just I thought it was always troll to go heart steel. <laughs> um, in it's, the jungle. Heart steel is one of those items that it's not the best right now on a lot of champs, and a lot of champs are building it later than right away because it doesn't give you the defensive stats that you necessarily need early oh. on. It just Little gives Tommy you is, is doing some serious damage to this or dear. The two of the, uh, these two do need to be careful. One of them goes down, that could potentially mean that a 4v5 is going to be taken at that Baron. They're looking to just start fighting here. Tommy does have his ult ready. He's waiting for to get a bit more low, but he's side just throwing summoner spe uh, spells back and forth. Nobody's blown anything yet. Oh my goodness. There's the stairs the gate. This is the longest fight in holy what was that auto i have no idea i know that he's not like really tanky he's just kind of like ap health tank and but this that was a huge auto but baron is see. started yeah baron being started with the atrox bot side they feel safe with having him push. Yon isn't even there with his team. He's still farming topside. I don't know if he's tilted or not. 
but he needs to be there or, for them to contest. As the second Baron goes over to TPO Raiders, they're now chasing uh, Mint Gaming Avalon out of their own, out of mid lane, flash away from the Yom not to get hit by the Zack engage. The Thresh hook does go wide there. Um, TPO Raiders does need to be careful here. The Silas and the Aatrox went back. And it's just the three. And do you see right. Elder gonna be up in 50 seconds? I think whoever secures Elder takes game. So, Honestly. Loki, are we gonna get a baby Elder before the Elder, or is just the Elder gonna go down first? Um. I mean, we're at 241, so he is. He is there. 241 stacks on Smolder. So he does have the execute? Mm hmm. He does. So TPO has to play these cards right. Um, I think if it's they more... don't take out the. If, if they don't take out the Smolder or watch out for the ult, it could be like absolutely catastrophic. I think it's more of not letting the Smolder get poked out or just dope these past couple fights for the smolder he's just been instantly dove on in one shot silas has just silas has stolen the sejuani a, a few times going and the flash being blown by the smolder is already big the flash to get the chain by the zack he's trying to get more here comes the smolder all across the team cleanse from the varus they're trying to get as much out of here. The Smolder is do being protected very well, but the Aatrox is just still there. The Smolder goes down as the Aatrox is just running oh through goodness. the team under turret. This that is, is game. a clean ace. They don't even need it to take Elder Drake. They just killed Elder Drake. Yeah, that that oh, was it's... as clean of a fight that mint gaming avalon was gonna get they did their front to back it's just they are so far far behind this game that it was not enough and game number one does go over to tpo ending in a 37 versus 14 with um silas doing the most damage in the game at 33,000. but um we are going to go to a quick uh, break to get ready for game number two, so don't go anywhere. We shall be right back. Waking up to the sound of your voice in my head, it's hard not to forget. All the good times we had that have now gone to waste Left alone and misplaced How can I go on without you? I'm scared to lose myself How can I move on without you? When I am lost my strength So I'll keep holding on, on holding on, on Cause things will get
back to draft for game number two. I just ran up the flow stairs and I'm out of breath fully. Alright. So I am expecting to see a little bit of a different draft. Maybe some changes uh, to the first or se second no, picks. I'll be surprised if Silas gets through again. Um, I don't even necessarily know if it was the Silas issue. It was just... Um... I feel, feel like Mint Gaming Avalon drafted themselves into a small little bubble. And yeah. if they didn't get ahead and the enemy team got ahead, it made it very difficult to team fight because they had limited um, damage. Where it was mainly the, towards the end, it was just mainly the Smolder being able to output damage. The Yon did have a decent amount, but he wasn't ahead. So he struggled that game. And once the Smolder and even the Yom died, they had no damage to follow up, and it was just over. They had to choose to run, or they were just smacking people with uh, big meaty mitts. Well, the first three bands did say the same. Misfortune, Belveth and Malkai on the side of TPO. Uh, Mint did it. Uh, Goes the Senna, Trundle, and Pike. They first picked Zack on TPO, which is very surprising to me. It means that they view the power of Zack to be better than other picks. And instead of tr possibly risking it going over to the enemy team, they just wanted it for themselves. Um, but They're going to take Smolder again. Seeing the smolder again, um, they didn't do terrible on it. It was just one of those things that the team around him just wasn't there. It, smolder is a lot like Kogma um, and Jinx, where he needs that front line to kind of do it to protect him. And if you have something like a dive comp, it just becomes a hassle to do with anything. I am... Um, so we do see Mordekaiser are picked up. I'm uh, going to assume... Um, I'm guessing... Yeah, that'll likely be a top Mordekaiser. I don't know how I feel about blind picking top laners. Um, it kind of does put you in to... into uh, the possibility of just getting a free counter pick with no regard 
Um, I'm surprised that they let Smolder through game two. I mean, like, I, I can't, like, the Smolder didn't play bad by any means, but it wasn't as, as much of a standout performance as I was kind of hoping to see. But uh, they did lock in Samira Nautilus for game two for TPO. So they have Smolder Brom in the bot lane, or at least Brom Hover. I, I will say yeah, it no, does look like it. TPO Raiders has an idea of how to play into a smolder because they've picked these aggressive get in your face team comps. They're showing the Zach again. They pick the Samira that all that she wants to do is get into that team and get that S and then just start popping off. Um, so that will be a big impact there to kind of prevent the smolder. If she gets snowballing early, she's just going to almost one shot the smolder if she gets onto him or see him get kinda wanna again i kind of want to see um a certain pick from we good and i'm pretty sure um he knows exactly what i'm talking about so i'm gonna hold my breath for that one i'll be surprised if they give them silas again but uh we do see a lowey band um crackhead was banned on the side of tpo Still don't want to see Briar, but they are sticking to the same bands as last time. Yeah, this we is do really see the Rumble being hovered. Interesting, saying, hey, we're fine if you run it back with the same picks. But TPO Raiders has not elected to, but neither side is willing to go away from their five bands. They say, hey, these are perfectly fine. We don't need to do anything else. We can figure something out with our champ pools that works into whatever you pick. I have the obsession with these bobas. I'm still eating the bobas, Jim. Okay. Yeah. All right, what's gonna be picked up? For the side of mint, we see a rise, very interesting. Honestly, that's not a pick that I've seen um, a crazy amount of my personal opinion is he's not overly strong in the meta at the time due to the item changes but comfort is comfort you know how to play your champions so all the power to you so I guess my question is if you blind pick the mord are you I don't know their champion pools so what? it might be a flex for that Mordekaiser the gangplank into Mordekaiser is a heavy counter and that's the Silas again. Um, uh, we good. That's not what I wanted. <laughs> oh, man. That's okay. I'll forgive you this time. All right. So now we have jungle left. And unless that's a Mordekaiser jungle and I'm missing something. But I'm pretty sure more jungle is not optimal in this meta. But uh, I was very wrong. Okay. And hey, I'm, it's going to get locked in as Urgot. Um, I'm guessing it's not Urgot jungle and it's more jungle. Um, so they... If it's more jungle a thing? I know it was like last it's season. It's not for super like strong. Um, it's not super strong anymore. Because it's only the big minions that proc his passive AoE. Instead of every single minion where you can't just like auto heal like, on repeat well it wasn't even the heal on repeat it was just like auto the three small chickens and it'll go through it you have to auto the big chickens okay so it will be somewhat interesting interesting to see how it works out in the jungle yeah, I mean, props to you for trying. Um, I mean, I'm all for, you know, crazy wild decks, as I'm sure you know, so. Not a problem. All right, so based on the drafts, um, actually, Jim, since you're a top lane person and uh, I just int, um, I obviously know, like, what Urgot does, but uh, Gangplank is one chance and I refuse to touch. What is the matchup between uh, GP and Urgot? 
I want to say it's Urgot's favor. Um, just okay. because it's the melee matchup, essentially, and if Urgot chooses to engage, yes, there's the orange that can cleanse this stun after the E, but it's kind of sitting there going at as Urgot can get that early aggression and Gangplank does want to scale, um, get those gold doubloons. Not gold but doubloons. Silver AP, serpents. Um, was it orange peel the all or no? I, I'm not sure about that one. I don't know Maybe how that works. Chat, no? If GP you. can dump you or got ult. He can. He can. Thank oh. you, Tommy. Intriguing. Okay. Is it something Does that you... I feel like it's <laughs> got to be something timing. I'm looking at it up right now. I want to see what the matchup is. I feel like that's um, got to be a timing thing where you can't just like get ulted and then instantly orange because that would just be broken. <laughs> and it would make it so that the Urgot right. would have to fucking Please. W instantly. Um, um, so it is a 46% matchup in Urgot's favor. Oof. So yeah. You chose not to go with the Mordekaiser top lane and, and went. Yeah. Unless it's something that they're comfortable, like heavily comfortable on in top lane and say, hey, I've beaten so many gangplanks before, I'm not afraid of this guy's uh, gangplank. That could be potentially it. I mean, hey, I'm all for this. I'm interested to see uh, Lucy on Samira. I don't think I've ever seen him play Samir, I'm going to be honest. I know he does, but um, competitively, I don't think I've seen it. So, um, I do have to give props to Mopish for stepping in um, nice last time. minute and doing such a phenomenal job at what... Um, like, with a new ADC and having, like, um, a different bot lane can actually make, like, a big difference in how the team synergizes. So, the fact that they were able to pull that off last game, like, I know Lucy's one of those players that will literally lean with anyone and does a great job. It's like a built-in thing where they can synergize with anyone, so. Honestly, I have a lot of faith in this team, and I'm excited for game number two. But we are going to go on a quick break to get um, through the spectator delay, so uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Nothing's permanent And you wanna make the time count Still nothing's permanent Except everything is done oh, oh. everything is done oh, oh.
Alright, everyone, welcome back to game number two of TPO Raiders versus Mint Avalon Gaming. This is out of the LAS Emerald series. Alright. It looks like we are doing our standard five point versus uh, no cheese strats. Y'all are boring. Okay. <laughs> There's too much scaling in this game for anybody to really want to do any level 1 shenanigans. And on top of that, yeah, there's a lot of CC on TPO Raiders side, but Braum passive, uh, Q passive is crazy. <laughs> Alright, somebody was just pinging yeah, their team to um, hell. Uh, yeah, that would be um, Aztec and Lucy pinging each other that they were uh, alive. Okay. Because that still comes through. The pings aren't visible, but the scroll <laughs> noise does Yeah, there was come probably through. about 35 uh, pings. Alright, Mordecai's is getting his dance on in the jungle. I do have to appreciate, say, I do appreciate the names. Uh, oh, they are going to collapse some wee oh, good early. That is no bueno. Ghost is blown. By Urga, yeah. Oh my Smurf gosh. What? Forcing and models <laughs> forcing out the flash from the little dragon. No summoners were used on the side of TPO. Silas didn't back though. No, that was probably a mistake. I mean, you don't want to risk losing too much in the early, but if you die, you lose uh, more. So right, like, right there. Yeah, he ended up blowing his flash to get out. He's going to have to blow his teleport to get back and not be too far behind in experience and CS. So, nice engage from the Nautilus onto this Brom. Samira is just trading poke for poke. Do you like Mopish on this Nautilus? Is doing well, showing that he understands the champ pretty well. Um, he waited to use his W shield until he was just about to be stunned, so all the additional damage afterwards didn't come out. But this is a much better matchup, it looks like, for Pendragon in that mid lane. Bullying the Silas. Does oh. commit to a trade. We good taking some damage here. Oh. Morkaz is gonna face check. <laughs> Aztec and Tommy. Tommy's getting very low. First blood goes over to the Mordecai there. Gangplank did blow the flash in that little exchange there. And so did the Mordekaiser as well to kind of follow and make sure that the um, <clears throat> Gangplank does go down. This is a much different mid laner than we saw game one. Game one was a struggle in the mid lane on the side of Mint. Uh, maybe this is just more comfort for Pendragon? Um, I think it's between the comfort and as well as the range advantage. Um, Silas still has to walk up to be um, aggressive while the, the Rise can just kind of point and click some of these abilities to just apply um, damage to this Silas, who's gonna have to exchange his health for farming in most of these cases. This is out of mana, so it's taking it back here. This will give uh, Silas the opportunity to farm back up, maybe get um, even with the rise. Yeah. 
A um, little bit of CS difference up in the top lane. Um, Urgot's wave clear is um, it's fairly decent, I want to say, like, all the way around. He's a little bit mana hungry in the beginning, but once he hits level 9, when that W requires no mana, is that, um, like, no cooldown? It will be a lot, uh, easier for him to farm. Whiskey Lion once again going in for these early void drops. Um, isn't spotted on any vision because they did have Scuttle up on that side. So we'll be able to take that uncontested and with no response from TPO. Looks like Vigo is struggling a little bit here in the mid lane. Maybe some uh, relief of pressure from that coming in here. So Gangplank ult gang does plank come out. Good chain oh, lockdown nice. as the Silas is able to get the kill onto the Rise, um, who has a 20 CS lead. Should, he should be able to make up uh, a bit of this as he. The Rice does not have the teleport here to get back into lane. Urga is roaming down. I think he might try looking for a snipe of that ult. So the Silas needs to be careful. <laughs> I mean, this is just letting uh, GP get back up farm wise. Does um, GP still build like the full crit? Um, so my build is a bit different than everybody else's. <laughs> uh, but I, yes, I want to say he still goes Essence Reaver. It's a, I think a mix of crit and lethality. Gotcha. Um, unless he's back to the Trinity first builds, but here comes the Zac. Gets the oh. smolder as the, <clears throat> they attempted to fly away. Nobody's level six yet. Here comes the Mordekaiser who's level six though. This oh, could no. be rough as the Mord does choose to ult the <clears throat> Zach who launches himself oh, to no. the opposite side. He's going to be left to his on his own. Silas is there now. Um, but it's too little too late as TPO Raiders looks like they had a good engage, but the Mordekaiser was there already as well as the Rise was able to just come on down. And this is going to be first Drake over to Mint. It looks like uh, they, they were uh, tired of um, the, the bullying that happened in game number one, so they're bringing it back game two, but we could have been in a tough spot right now if director camera goes back top of course. Um, I do want to point out, the Zek is struggling right now into this Mordekaiser who has 70 CS to the 41. Um, part of that is in big play due to the Void Grubs as well as the Drake um, I believe, though, Mord has stolen a few camps here and there. Yes, he did. Yeah, the... It looks like Mid is struggling as well to face this rise. I mean... I possibly underestimated the ability of rise. Oh. Silas getting low on uh, mana, getting chunk damage out. Very much a slower paced game this time. Yeah. Um, Zach is looking to get these void grubs started. The Nautilus has come, but this looks like it's going to be a 3v3. Silas teleporting in, trying to get their. Um, 
the Zack goes in, Zack ult comes out as well as the, the ult from the Gangplank. It's going to be a one for one now, um, but there's just nobody has gone down yet. Uh, the Mord gets a kill onto the Silas. It's not going to be enough as it's going to be a three for one in the oh long God. run in the in Mint Gaming Avalon is going to be able to get five um, Void Grubs and still get those little minions that spawn on those turrets. That was a rough fight <laughs> on the side of TPL. I just don't think they had the damage there. I think Moop has just stepped up on that pink and just ignored it. That's what we do here at TPL is we walk over a pink board. No, um, I mean, as long as you know it's there, you can go pick it up later. Uh, yeah, but you don't want to necessarily leave that up for if you push in. Because then you'll just get teleported on and it will be no fun. This gangplank is struggling with those barrels. Yeah. I didn't really see um, gangplank in little Tommy's pool, but... I didn't really look at it like, in depth. Oh, really early orange allowed to <coughs> engage followed up by the ult oh, and that's no. going to be a solo kill for that ergot up in top lane just bullying this gangplank right now who's died three times so far this game this is a much different early game um, for tpo raiders this time I mean, the the favor was technically, or the the matchup was in favor of Urgot versus uh, GP. How many stacks are we at with uh, Smolder here? We are at sixty stacks at twelve minutes. Not a real boy yet. They. I'm, I'm literally gonna be. They are trolling. Holy! You guys backed on a pink ward. What? Do you see the Zach trying to look top type now? Um, see what they can get. The Urgot once again going in onto the gangplank. Zach has not gone in yet. It's just gonna choose to back here. Uh, did stop his recall. They're looking for something. And kind of does the dash away, but Gangplank alt does come out. Very interesting. Um now Min is looking for the second streak where Harold is up in about ten seconds. Zack is in the top side of Min's jungle. Looks like they're just gonna hand over this dragon. I don't really think that there's that much power currently for TPO right now to kind of get in and fight for these objectives. They are gonna need to start making count the cross map plays in order to do something, but they haven't been able to find any of those plays as of yet. Zack was able to invade and take two camps, but it looks like Mord is just going to do the same exact thing. Um, actually, no, they just placed Deep Vision Go, but Florigato has got to be careful. They might be caught out here. Nautilus um, does open. face check. Gets ulted, but flash for flash um, between the Mord and the Nautilus and the Mord ult. Nautilus trying to get under turret, but will go down. The Mordecai's are now 4 0 and 3. As now it's the turn for this um, Samira to get dove. And another kill over to the, the Mordecai's are unfortunately 
the smolder did try flashing there to get the kill for themselves, but Mort said, nah, that's mine. And that's going to be both mid and bot that falls for TPO Raiders, as this has been a game that's been in full control for mid gaming Avalon. Absolutely. Lots of vision placed by men in the jungle of uh, raiders so that they are aware of what the path thing is. Uh, Zach is gonna get caught in the enemy jungle. What are you gonna... doing, at, Zach? Zach does go in with the knock, but doesn't get the. Uh the bounce onto anybody. Urgot's now oh, here. No. Completely pops the Nautilus instantly. And this is going to be Herald as more of Mint Gaming Avalon did rotate over. Now the teleport out from the Rise to make sure that Smear does not get the, the tier, one. tier 1 turret in that bounty goal. Now. Little Tommy on that gangplank is caught out the flash, but he goes nowhere but to the green screen. The Silas with the stolen more uh, uh, does get a kill onto the, the smolder. He does need to probably back off here as the the Urgot and Brom are coming in. Um, Aztec is there, but I don't think that's an engage that they want to take. There's just way too much vision placed. Are they going to catch out, uh, Pendragon here? The Samira ult comes out and does take out the Rise. Nicely done. Alright, it is 4-12 right now. There is a, what, 6? Get under math, Jim. Uh, it's close to a six. Six and a half K lead. Yeah. But we are seeing that there is a lot of gold, but I want to say, just look at it. It is predominantly on that top side, a three K lead between the Urgot and the Gangplank, and then a another three K lead for the moored in over the Zack. Otherwise, there's a uh, gold lead for Samira and just a, and a thousand gold lead for the Rise in that mid lane. The full, almost a 40 CS lead. That's a wild. Um, probably not a fight that I would take there, Aztec, but Little Tommy is trying his best against his Mordekaiser in the top lane. So there is no jungler at Drake right now on the side of Mint. Yeah, but they got 30 seconds to turn and head towards that. So if not, something super I mean, impactful. They do also have an Urgot for Mint who can take Drakes. It's the smite though that you gotta be careful. But it looks like Ryze might be caught out here. He does blow the flash to make sure that he gets out of there after face checking the rot the silas and the earth uh, now it's the ergot's turn and that is a huge overstep as the stolen ult does make sure that two go down in the long run and now mint is on vision right now my question to Mint, you have the power, why are you face checking bushes? Uh, because of that? But that was somebody that they pulled down, and now the ult is blown for the Mord. The Samira is get asked already. We're seeing the ult come out. She is chunking out. The Mord is able to get one back. The Mord is being able to heal tank up. There's just not enough damage in the huge teleport oh. ult from the Urgot to make sure that it is an ace and that's going to be third Drake. Very well played by Min. This game is in 
Min's control at this point. They're gonna go right up to Baron with no hesitation. Yep. This is their Baron for free. So, their top side is just too far above TPO Raiders. I feel like it's just too far behind. Um, we saw the damage coming out from the Silas again, from that Samira, but they just weren't able to get close enough. And I did notice there have been some adjustments in the smolder build. He did go ahead and take the um, heel, cut. heel cut early on to kind of cut down on the sack blobs. I want to say that like it is a big possibility that we see a game three just due to the huge change between the two teams and their play styles. Um, I definitely underestimated the um, jungle mord as it's not something that you see very uh, very often. No, it just it's still decent it's just not what it was at one point where it was just the pick in the jungle because his clear was obnoxiously stupid yeah well, i remember when could, it was very strong you could just auto whatever and you would get your passive off in the jungle um I mean, is not in the best of places i understand trying to clear off vision but he might be a little bit in the middle of nowhere Ooh. Big chunk onto the Samira. Um, had not been as impactful this game. Herald um. was dropped to get that tier 2 in mid and does have another charge on it. Could go for a second charge into the mid lane and will. That's going to be an inhib turret down. And we it looks gonna... like they're charging it back in to make sure the inhib itself goes down. Look at, but look at all those minions from all the charges. As the Herald does finally go down, Silas is bot side, but that's a three level lead between the Silas and the Rise. We're just seeing these level leads that are just causing TPO Raiders to just get bullied out this game. Um, so I don't see don't, Mint backing off. No, I don't think they need to. They have, they have these massive level leads. They have minions pushing into all three waves. The oh, well, just me. pushing off the gangplank as he goes down. It's now a 4v5. There's not a crazy amount of wave clear either from this TPO Raiders. And that's the ult from the... Smolder followed up by the Urgot ult to make sure that the Zac gets pulled back into the team. Um, and Mord ults the Nautilus to make sure that he doesn't get out. That's, that's gonna be game, game two. Yep, over to Mint Gaming. This evens the scoreline out to 1-1. One, one. Um, so this next game will determine who takes the series. But we're going to go on a quick break to get ready for the draft of game number three. So again, don't go anywhere. TPO will be right back. Don't let go my hand. No need to pretend. I want you forever. I will love you to the end. Hope Trendy. 
Welcome back, everyone, to draft for game number three, TPO Raiders versus Mint Gaming Avalon. Um, we're not quite into draft yet, as we needed to take a little bathroom break. Um, Listen, bathroom breaks happen. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Um, that was a very, very wild game number two as uh, Mint kind of uh, showed their dominance in some champions that were very different um, than what was played in game number one so now time for the mental reset raiders and uh, alright we have started draft apparently the see is back and ready to rumble um, we are going to see Mint ban Senna TPO bans misfortune. We are going to be. Are we just flying through bans again and having the same? Uh, apparently. Apparently. Oh, they're slowing down. They're thinking about it. Trundle. <laughs> Velvet. All right. Velvet. Same ones. Allowing. Allowing. All right. Allowing. We're going to early ban the Alawi. And what is the last ban for TPO? Mordekaiser! Alright, they do not want to see that Mordekaiser again. Um, I don't know who... Uh, who did they let through? So, Maokai and Pike were let through. And that is, looks like they're going to steal the Zack away this time. Okay. And the Maokai and they... might get stolen here as well. Actually, no, that wasn't even I... stolen. That was a pit ban that they were set against. Okay. He is still fairly strong. Even as support with all those nerfs trying to buff him so that he can be a top lane tank, there people are just <laughs> still like, he's too versatile and useful as a support. And his kit is fine still with all the cheap items of support. Now, are we going to see a smolder pack up on the side of TPO? I don't know how much Lucy has played it, but all right. It has been taken by TPO. We're going to see the dragon. Okay. 
Let's see what the response is for Mint. And that's going to be a Gin Hover. Intriguing. Stand like one stand in the back line yourself, as well as just the early game damage of the fourth shot could kind of be impactful into bullying the smolder. Um, I don't know. I don't know bot lane matchups. I have been out of bot lane so for so freaking long. <laughs> it feels like. Started. Uh, I played no. three games of bot lane and then went. Nah, I'm playing top, and all of a sudden I'm back in jungle. It's actually it's a it's a fifty fifty matchup. Yeah. All right, is it that is a Darius hover Dardar? So we got a Jin Nautilus bot lane. Darius support. I've the only Darius support. <laughs> the support to end all supports, Darius. Yes, there you go. I would say if it was Florigato in the jungle, we'd often see uh, Aphelios jungle. Aphelios jungle come out. <laughs> uh, the crackhead was banned on the side of PPO, not wanting to waver from that. Well, she's been getting picked up in that top lane as well, so it is something kind of. If they don't take that top, they can take Ooh. it jungle. So the Jin Zhao was banned. Does he play Jin Zhao? I think they're trying to figure out who's playing the Darius. True. That is one of... Because uh... I think both Tommy and Aptos play it. Yeah. I do know one of... Um... Oh. I need caffeine. Holy. Um... Oh, what was the... Oh, that was a Jax ban. Okay. <laughs> Alright, we see a Braum locked in. On the side of TPO, it says a Smolder Braum bot lane. So that's still a flex. Is it Darius or is it Maokai top? I don't know. They're looking to take Urgot again, though. And we saw how impactful the Urgot was game one. Even though I so don't like to see, see the same played. Yeah, game two, whatever. Same thing. I don't like to see the same champs played over and over again, but if it's comfort, you know, they're going to secure it. Alright, and the... Oh, they're going to... Pick rise again. Guys, I need something different here. Are we going to lock in rise? Come on, we good. I know one of y'all are listening. I want we good on that one pick. Nope. That's not it. Starts with the same letter. And <laughs> if it is Abdos or Florigato doing the draft, they would troll you and hover this for a while and then at five seconds flip it to what you want and then flip it back to this. It's Lucy doing draft. <laughs> um, Florigato is the drafter, has always been. It is an Azir bot lane, or mid lane, mid -lane. Jesus. All right, so we have the picks and band secured. Now let's do some gaming. What type of game? How are you feeling about these drafts? Um, I do like the change up for both teams. Um, it's a bit more of the same for gaming. Top. Um, yeah. They have a backline ADC. Um, the rise is still there, and that looks to be comfort for Pendragon. Um, Urgot is back, which looked 
very comfortable on um, We Wizard. Uh, they do have a decent amount of engage as well, which is helpful for this team because they're there's a ton of disengage. There's the Malkai ult. There's the Brom ult. There's the Azir ult that can all be used for disengage to get onto mm -hmm. this. It will be interesting to see if it is the Malkai top lane or is it, if, is it the Darius top lane. Um, all right, let's go. More importantly, I want to know what you think about red side versus blue side because so far this series we've seen the red side just come out on top i i games. personally prefer red side when i'm playing i prefer to play on red side i think um like regardless of the map changes i think that red side is more forgiving than blue side even though that is probably not a popular opinion among the uh the rest of the league players, but I really do not mind red side at all. I think yeah, it is. There is a little bit more warding and vision needed, but um, I do think that you have um, more of an impact on when you play red side. I think it, it's mean, a lot easier. It, there's certain aspects that people don't know as of yet, like. Part of me wonders how many people are aware of the fact that the bush behind Baron Pit on red side doesn't give full vision of that uh, walkthrough section. Where it's a jungler could technically skirt around, hug the walls, and get through that little alcove into that river without being noticed. Because I mean, the map changes did change a bit where you place wards. You don't just, like in mid lane, you don't just place your ward over your, your wall because it doesn't necessarily get the full length of that bush anymore. So you gotta you place it closer to in... the middle. I've seen a lot of people have been placing it in the, um, in the chicken's pit. Um, like towards the the river part, but um, I mean, you're you're talking to an ADC, so uh, no, that's I mean... <laughs> where you go right now is you do put that vision into when you're trying to ward that section, you do put it up, like directly in the middle of that walkthrough and not um in the bush anymore just yeah. to kind of prevent you from going. The chickens, it's kind of viewed as a lazy ward, because, yeah, you see the camp, but you don't see much out of the camp. Um, I don't know. Like, the higher elos that I've been casting have all placed their vision there, and apparently the players swear by it. I don't know what vision it gives, because I can't imagine that it gives you a whole lot, but... So what it gives you is it gives you awareness of the camp, as well as if he's there, if it's up, or if it's down. You can tend to be able to track the jungler based off of what camps are up and where they're pathing and if they step on any type of vision. Um, mm -hmm. But like, it's a very quick, efficient ward, but it's not the best ward to be placed because it doesn't necessarily give. If you're getting caught on vision left and right as a jungler in your chickens, if I look, say, I'm going to gank after chickens. I'm going to switch it up after trying twice and go and say, I'm going to gank and then do chickens. That way you can kind of move to have a more sporadic effect and possibly catch them off guard because they're like, oh, chickens are up. They're going to be on this side soon. They will probably do the chickens and then all of a sudden you're in the lane and they're like, if they didn't do chickens, they've been doing chickens and then trying to gank every single time. Now they've switched it up where they're not, they're ignoring the chickens because we know that we've got it ordered for the past few times. Um, we will have to see how these two teams battle it out to see who takes the series. Um, we are going to go on a quick uh, break to get uh, through the 
lovely spectator delay, so don't go anywhere. We will be right back. You say I make you nervous, a tragedy, I'm a beautiful disaster, a reckoning, you wonder how I got this way. You think I'm someone to be saved. Someone to clean up and tame Oh, some things never change Never change oh. You think I would look pretty On your arm once you cover up my bruises And battle scars But it always ends the same Can't bear the things I've had to face Got you crying on your knees in pain Oh, some things never change Never change Asking for forgiveness Cause you should know Only fools tread with the angels Fear to go But you keep trying To get too close Save myself by turning into stone So save your judgment Cause you just don't know But some things never change Never change Oh They say I should feel guilty And change my ways Leave and crumple bodies In my wakes where Welcome back to game number three, final game in this best of three series, TPA Raiders versus Mint Av or Mint Gaming Avalon. Yes, um, Mint Gaming Avalon. <laughs> I will, I'll say it right at some point. Um, looks like your standard five point start it is um, a Maokai jungle and a Darter top lane. Are they looking for something? Um, potentially. Uh, alright. Or they're just doing the same thing of expecting an invade. I'm very. Both sides are going to be spotted here. Right. 
deep vision does go down for both sides. So both sides are going to be aware of where the junglers start. Zack is going to go and start his wolves. So both junglers actually trying to avoid showing where they are. Don't know if that stealth ward did see. Did exactly see? Not. Um, I do not believe so. I'm very um surprised that Smolder did not go calm at either of these games. Or is that like build not it anymore? The Nautilus sure. hook does go wide. On uh, the bot side of mint does hit level two first. As Smolder's playing very careful underneath the uh the turret. Oh, the root from Jin does come out onto Smolder. Smolder did start the edge. Very, very s slow pace start. I like action and chaos in the beginning. No, this is a much more... I think the only s section that wants to kind of snowball is that top side. Otherwise, Ev Jin might want to get some early action, but Smolder wants to scale. Rise and Azir both kind of want to scale. TPO did hit level 3 first in the bot lane. Uh, top lane has just been kind of farming simulators. This one's going to be about the same as well. Well, they're better yet, dodge those. With some How, uh, great ADCs, believe, in the face tank. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, of course. Maokai is coming, looking for something. Um, after securing the scuttle. Looks like he's venturing into the side of Zach's jungle, but... He's just trying to see what he can find. Doesn't find anything, though. He's looking for some type of invade in the mid lane, but just decides to pass through. Just saying hello. Hi. Asking for uh, some child support. Cards extended the uh, warranty. No child support. Oh there's, yes, with the there's a child and there's blocked out. Okay. And this one's yours. Take care of it. She's such chum. Listen, he's a tree and he throws saplings. Uh, all right. Um. I just, uh, I want action. We do have the first Drake up, which is Chemtech. That used to be my favorite Drake of all times. Not quite sure how I feel about it now. Now I just don't like any of them. I do like the plant cells that it gives. Um, we should be also, just thought about this, we should be keeping an eye on these stacks. The game continues for the smoke yeah, yeah. to see where he is. I have been keeping track of him. He's only in 20 yeah. stacks right now. Despite being poked out early, Smolder's actually been able to kind of just remain in lane and be healthy and play safe. Um, <clears throat> hasn't used any of those heal potions 
Well, Jin used all of his. He's got all three cookies still. So he's farming well. He's um, not entirely behind. It's an interesting move as the... <clears throat> Entire um, team of <laughs> Mint Gaming Avalon decided to go for first Drake instead of trying to get these Void Grubs early. Um, so apparently they're doing the exact opposite of what TPO Raiders did in game one. Um, priority the dragons to take away from the dragon. If we get to Elder Buff before the little one gets to Elder Buff, it doesn't matter. Yeah, they're just poking right now, it seems like. But, uh, Zach is bot side, not seen yet. Won't be seen until he gets into that middle bush. I don't know if his snap is that far. He does get onto the Brom. The Brom may go down here. The ignite codes ignite. off, so it's not yet. But this is something that they got to be careful. The exhaust, oh, maybe in a two flash auto for the first blood over to the smolder. They're trying no to get more knowledge goes down. This is a complete and utter ca catastrophe for Mint and Gaming, as that looks like it's going to be a triple kill to that smolder. Oh, Jeez. <laughs> Not uh, something that you want on a uh, skilling dragon thing. And it's okay, Mopish. You can unclench now. <laughs> that was, I want to say, probably two health in that fight that he didn't yeah. burn down from. And then he decided, crazily enough, that this is the time that we re-engage. <laughs> You know what? He was probably willing to go down for the smolder in order for them to get the uh, the triple kill. Uh, Rise is very low on mana in the mid lane. Um, we good is about 10 CS down. That's really not a whole lot. You're able to catch up there. Um, both support items have been. Um, that is a full place. essence reaver. Holy, uh, I, Essence Reaver and the, uh, the new, uh, what is it, Glowing Moat? I will not say what I think they are. Cause, Why? Because... It, are you using non-Twitch approved thoughts, yes. Jim? <laughs> I have no clue what it's called, and I've said it once bef a few times before in games and normals, wow. and I have just kind of been like, alright, it is what it is. I mean, you know what I call the rejuvenation beads, so... Yeah, closer to the long lines of that. <laughs> but it will be interesting to see how this bot lane starts going with the full item advantage onto that smolder. I'm down with the magic boots as well. Um, smolder does have 61 stacks. So he's got his first upgrade, right? It's 50? Or is it 75? No, I, I want to say it's 75, but uh, I really haven't played the champ enough. You're Let me see. Player. It is... Yeah, I know. I don't know. I just haven't played that champ like a whole lot, because every time I do, I get a support It's, it's upgraded. <laughs> oh, okay. I just saw the Q come out, and it did the Tristana bomb effect. Oh, nice. Right, um, Urgot is getting, um, almost a full turret plate. Um, Darius is about 10 CS down. Looks like he does have the sheen and the boots. Counter ganks coming in. The Maokai is the oh, first oh, one to go in, but the Zac is here now. Does not get the... CC, but the oh, Maokai no, is not able to provide enough as the Azir does go down. They're trying to trade here. The Urgot ult goes oh. wide. The Maokai's trying to get out. <coughs> but it's Fancy Feet game. A oh, huge wee. W from the Jin to get, but the Darius is now here. The ult from the 
Nautilus to try to push him off. As well as ignite the ignite from did Nautilus. go down as well. <laughs> That's a me ignite right there, you know, full health. Good hook by the Nautilus, followed up by the, the oh, e from yeah. <clears throat> the Urgot. And that's going to be another kill over to the Jin, as well as the Brom likely going down here. This is not a good fight at all. Um, complete opposite of what Mint Gaming had go in bot lane. They got here in this mid lane fight where TPO Raiders just kind of came in in waves. They lost the 2v2 and then continued to send two more into the four. But it looks like they might be able to just trade the Grubs for the Drakes, for the second Drake here, which will balance out on both sides. Alright, so they, both teams have three Void Grubs. Both teams have a, uh, have a Drake. Have a Drake. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Cloud Drake does give the uh, five percent out of combat move speed and slow resistance. So I don't know. What, uh, Chem Tech has never shown what it does. It drives me insane. Um, Chem Tech does um, tenacity. Okay. All right. So bot lane has rotated mid. Mid is rotating bot lane. I will say, Smolder was left down there for that fight, so I don't know uh, how much it was in advantage. Currently sitting about a thousand gold up onto the gin right now. Has it 85 stacks right now? Because um, he did take two turret plates there during that fight in that mid lane. Right, so... um. Darius is, I mean, the, it looks like Zach's looking for something on this Darius, but decides just to back. We do have Harold coming up in about 20 seconds. The yeah, smolder all comes out, but not uh, much comes up. This it. might be the knowledge oh. going down here, the flash, but they waited to hold on to the stun until the flash came through, so the hook wasn't able to be thrown. And that's going to be Nautilus going down there in that mid lane. And uh, TPL's looking for this Herald. But they are going to respond with <coughs> force. So it looks like Darius probably needs to rotate, to rotate down. down. But actually, no, Mint Gaming Avalon is just going to say, go ahead, take it. So they don't want to get commit to a fight that they could have potentially lost, even though TPO did blow two ults there mid lane to get that Nautilus. We're at like 105 stacks now. 100, yeah. And it's stacks from killing minions as well as attacking mm -hmm. allies, enemies. Is that built the same way as Vagar? No idea. I know Snom actually would know that. Not me. Oh, See I think Zach trying to go in. It doesn't connect with um, the engage or the Q. Did, does Smolder stacks uh, just go off of the CS, or is it like damage to champions, kills? Ability hits and Q's... Q last and Q hits. last hits, okay. So it's... Thank you. Poke onto enemies. This is... You know, it's, Darius is in a rough spot. The oh, flash boy. to dodge the ult. Um, and he's going to choose to go back in. I don't know if that was the best choice. No. He is just going to go down the in a 1v1. Rise ult is not... is used, but not followed through. They don't have okay. vision. Smolder needs to get out. <clears throat> he is going to get knocked back in. 
alt does come out from the smolder. They're now knocking the rise back. He does get stunned. The Brahm alt comes out, but here comes the Nautilus. They're trying to provide some <clears throat> relief, but it looks like the Maokai is going to be the first one to go down as the rise is barely able to get out with no health. But the Jin oh, is now here control. alting in. The oh, Bitter nice. Draw. I think he was trying to go for more, but ended up getting stunned there, that Azir. Tried doing the stream the shuffle, but ended up just getting stuck under turret and having to try pushing them off while tanking turret wasn't the best from there. Um, I now see the Zac looking to potentially try to go back in. Smolder now has 173 stacks. And we're seeing the gold get tied. Yeah, this is... Insane. We do have the Hextech Drake is up. Ow. So with the gold being tied, there is a massive lead on the smolder, but there is a large lead on there's a thirteen hundred lead on the Urgot over the Darius, as well as in mid lane there's about an eight hundred gold. Lead. So that's where the oh. differences are. The Smolder alt comes out, goes across the team, but doesn't do a ton of damage yet. The Azir oh, no. is on the back line. The Urgot does get his ult off. He is going through. The Smolder is trying to attack as much as possible. Does get the passive out onto the Zac, but I think it's too little too late as it's going to be a trade of <coughs> two... <laughs> Two kills for nothing, as even after they lost the Drake, I think they overpressed their hand. They weren't there soon enough. And I think it would have been better to just take that mid and hit and try getting a little bit more if they could with that Herald charge. I wasn't even paying attention to where Harold was dropped. It was dropped mid, it took mid turret, but I don't think it charged mid tier 2 at all. Ah, uh, yeah, it did not. Lucky. Urgot is about half health. If not that's something you want to stay for when you have a smolder in mid lane. Um, smolder's at 181 stacks, almost at that 225. Um, the stacks are piling up fairly quickly, so... Alright, we have... We have Baron coming up in 45 seconds. Even if they are losing fights, Smolder getting 20 to 30 stacks of fight is worth it. Oh, I agree. I think he's, yeah, he's got the upgraded uh, Is Q it now. up to the Q with the splash? Smite yeah. does come out for the Maokai. So that blue buff <laughs> was stolen away from Whiskey Lion on that Zack. Um, I will say this Urgot. Oh no, Nautilus never picked, or Nautilus went to pick it up. Um. I will say this Urgot is shown to be a menace in the sidelines. We Wizard yeah. definitely is something that if other teams are paying attention to, should be banned from him as he has shown two big performances. Rise now just looking to take that tier one top side with, that had no health. <clears throat> All right, we do have another Hextech Drake that comes up in about two minutes. It'll be interesting to see if teams would group for Baron or if they fight for Dragon. Because uh, we've got turrets down in top and mid. What is... I can just see Darius and Urgot like battling it out. Or Urgot's just standing in a bush. Alright. Alright, Smolder's at 210. We need the Elder Dragon. The baby Elder Dragon. Alright, we're 
seeing pings coming out here. It looks like they're gonna collapse on the Darius in the bot lane here. As he's backing on vision. I think they are aware that there is vision there now. <laughs> yeah, after his back gets stopped. Looks like they're gonna try setting up a trap here. I think the Rise is just gonna play it safe, say, hey, no, I don't wanna get caught out here. This is a very close game, but the kills are in favor of men. 650 gold bounty on the smolder. Oh, and <laughs> engage well, on to the from here. Out here. Malkite's gonna block the Jin alt. Azir teleport did come through. <laughs> Rise is Wrong. headed towards top lane to match. Not rest ears. Tell you for tell you. Stop that like And here comes the actual. Oh the my That's 225. Goodness. This is not a great fight. As the <clears throat> upgrade did come out for the smolder who's just shredding through the team. He's barely been touched. He is chasing down the gin now. That is a massive fight <clears throat> for TPO Cheezer. Hey. Uh, Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> right when they needed it. The Smolder got the passive upgrade and just started decimating that team fight. I love how you call it cheeser. This is gonna be the highlight of my I've called it. I think I've called almost every team cheeser besides cheeser. Yeah. Um. Uh, Rise, you kind of need to run. Darius trying to get more. The bleed is out, it. and that is gonna be a shutdown. I don't know if that was worth to try to, to fight that Drake. You did, yes, get the flash out as well as the all out from the Darius, but you end up giving over a shutdown on top of the Drake after that fight was lost. And you gave Smolder three kills in the process. That's the last thing that Smolder needs right now. I think this is going to be the myth. issue. Is it's They've essentially funneled all the gold into Smolder, and now they have to figure out a way to get onto the Smolder. And their team isn't as much of a dive. If it's not the Zac getting onto the smolder and targeting the smolder directly, then they have to fight through that front line. And the smolder is going to get through the front line faster than I think the Jin or the Rise will be able to. I have to see, say this smolder has scaled significantly faster than the smolders we saw in game one and two on the side of Min. Yes. Um, I think part of it is because they got, they did an early swap to mid, and were mid is I believe still the lane that gets the minions the fastest. Uh oh. Something happened with our Twitch, Jim. Oh no, it's back up. Okay. It had to stop. Yeah, it's offline. <laughs> 